Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Juan, I'm a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict, and I want to thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by to check out my video today. This is the Yarn and Crochet channel where we talk about all things yarn and all things crochet, so if that interests you, please sit back and watch this video because today, my friends, I offer you another session of Whipping It with Juan. So if you're new here and you're not sure what this is, first, a huge hi, hello, and welcome to you. I'm so glad you found me and I hope you enjoy your stay. If you do, feel free to consider subscribing. I would love to have you. And secondly, Whipping It with Juan is literally a crochet session where we sit down, we work on our whips, and we talk about all the things. So if that interests you, grab out your whip, something to drink, and let's get started. So today I am starting a new whip. So I have three blanket yarns here. I have carrot on the top. I have ivy on the side here and cobalt blue on this side. Now this one right here is Burnett blanket, 220 yards, super bulky number six. It is machine washable and dryable and they recommend an eight millimeter crochet hook for this. Um, yeah. I really enjoy this. This is super nice. Um, the two on the bottom though are uh, Big Twist Plush. It's 153 yards, so not as much yardage, which is fine. Um, but everything else is the same. So it's a super bulky number six. It's 100% polyester, machine washable and dryable. And so what I plan on doing for this session is I want to do a modern granny blanket and I want to use the orange as the in-between. So my single crochet chain rows in between the granny stitch will be in the orange, and then I'm going to alternate between the green and the blue. So orange is the little pop that it needs to just give it some excitement, and I think the blue and the green go really well together. So yeah, let's see how this turns out. Now I have the camera angled down, so no adjustments are needed. So we are just going to go ahead and get started. Let me go ahead and do this. Get myself situated here. Okay. So I'm going to start with the blue. Oh, yes. Before I forget, let me do like a pause to save the data just to make sure it doesn't get lost. Okay, friends. So we are back. I decided to do these little pause sessions just so that I don't lose the data. Um, I did multiple 50 minute sessions of whipping it with wands and I lost all the data numerous times. So from now on, I'm just going to do random pauses to just make sure that it gets saved, you know? Anyway, let me go ahead and get started on this. What are you guys working on? I'm so curious. Sound off in the comments. Let me know what you're working on. And uh, if you're not a member of my Facebook group, consider becoming a member so I can see your makes. Um, it's a group where we share our makes and uh, I'd love to see them. So if that is of interest to you, check me out. It's called Juan the Yarn Addict and Friends on Facebook. And uh, yeah, it's a great positive place. We just talk about crochet and our makes and things. And so, yeah, but it's not required. You can still tell me all the things in the comments. <laughs> uh, I've been on this granny square kick for, well, actually for a long time. This isn't even a phase. I've been doing granny squares for as long as I've been crocheting and I absolutely love doing them. They're lots of fun, especially when you know many, many, many different ways of how to do them. The possibilities are endless. Okay, that is a big square for a first round. <laughs> uh, I don't crochet with a nine millimeter crochet hook often, but when I do, I get amazed. I'm like, wow, this is great. Oops, let's crunch that down. That is a big first square, like a one round square. <laughs> That's so good. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to put a marker on the front so I know what side's the front and what side's the back, just to remind myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the middle stitch here with the orange, and I'm just going to do a tie, 
and I'm going to have the legs hanging on the front side. So that's the front. And when I do my single crocheted rounds, I just know to flip it on the side that doesn't have the legs. So that helps me out. Because I feel like the stitch markers, I mean, they're great, but when you're working with blanket yarn, just use a piece of yarn, you know? It saves you time and all the things. So, and I like to crochet over. So let's do a standing single, just like that. Chain one, go back in there with another single. Chain one, now drop the tail and then go in with a single crochet. Perfect. Love that, okay. Chain two, go into the next corner with a single, chain one, single, chain one, and single. Okay, I'm on a roll now. Okay, we're good. So, I've already asked what you guys are working on. So, what are you guys drinking? I have coffee, Dunkin' Donuts hazelnut with caramel macchiato creamer. Love this for me. I always say that too, even when the camera isn't rolling or like when I'm by myself, I take a sip and I always say, so good. <laughs> I have no idea why I do that, but I just do it. It's a thing. I love that for me. It reminds me how good the coffee is, <laughs> although I already know it. It's just one of my little things, my little things that I do. You know, I have to say what it is. And that's that. I don't know why. I just do it. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go ahead and connect here. Perfect. Perfect. We are well on our way, friends. Love it. Okay. I imagine as the rounds progress, it's going to take a few extra minutes to get where we need to go, you know, from round to round. And that's fine. Okay, let's do the green. I've done some pre-work, friends, with these uh, skeins of Bernat blanket and whatnot. It's very tight in the center, so I went ahead and took the liberty of pulling quite a bit out so I don't have to fuss with the skein, you know. Okay, let's go into a corner that we didn't just come out of. Okay. Let's figure this out here. Do, 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 do. Okay, there we go. All right. I got it figured out. I think. <laughs> okay. Two and three. Chain two. Go into the next one here. Just need to make sure I get it in the right spot there. Okay. So, I don't always work with Bernat Blanket. Um, I just recently got bitten by the am Amigurumi bug. So, until that takes full effect, whenever I do work with the super bulky sixes and it's like a blanket or something like that, I always have to warm up my wrists and things because there's a lot of movement happening with the thicker yarns. And so yes, it's an adjustment. But I do enjoy it because it is super squishy and soft. It's fun. Now the thickest hook I've ever worked with was a Q. I haven't worked with anything larger than a Q. I don't think I would want to. <laughs> it's just so big and like present. It's like, I'm a hook, hear me roar. <laughs> anyway, okay, we are on our way, friends. And already I feel like I have a blanket made. <laughs> Three rounds in. <laughs> uh, okay, so anyway. I have lots of things to talk about, as always, and I always try to save them for the Whipping It With Wand sessions because they're just all the things. They're so much fun. 
So, um, the response to these whipping it with wand sessions are amazing. First of all, like you guys send me nothing but positive messages about these things. And you talk about how you can't wait for the next one to come around, and I'm here for it. I'm like, yeah, send me all the positive vibes, because who could use them is me. We all could use positive vibes, you know? So why not? And it just gives us an opportunity to sit down and chit-chat and work on our things and take the focus off of everything else and just work on the crochet, you know? Okay. Okay. I have to make sure I get into the chain spaces on the corners because it's only a chain one and it's easy to miss the space, especially when you're working with a thicker yarn like this. So let's go ahead and get this correct. <laughs> one, two, and three. So yesterday I recorded a happy mail video and I opened up a ridiculous amount of happy mail but in my defense I was actually waiting um, you know that some of that happy mail has been sitting here for a while I've been so busy between kicking off my crochet along and wrapping up projects from April I just really couldn't carve out the time to do a happy mail video sooner so I did one and afterwards I'm watching the video back and I'm like oh my goodness Juan you should have done a video sooner so mental note to myself don't allow long periods of time to to go on before you do another one of those kinds of videos you know just keep them short and sweet and to the point instead of long and drug out you know um, because I, after that was done, I wanted to do a whipping it with wand session yesterday, but there was just all the things that I had to deal with, with, you know, wrapping up the happy meal and getting it cleaned up and getting the cardboard out to recycling, you know, it turned out to be a whole thing. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Next time I do videos like that, it's going to be short and sweet and to the point, um, uh, so I can fit something else in, you know? There we go. Okay, we're getting there. Go back to the orange one. Actually, you know what I need to do? I need to trim the things that I crochet over. It's gonna save me time if I do it now. So I try to crochet over my tails so I don't have to sew them in. There are some that I, I just can't, you can't help it. So, okay, is this one? So I have two so far, that's not bad. Okay. Anyway, so these hooks right here are prim hooks. I love these prim hooks, they're great. They're ergonomic, they're big, they're long. Um, you know, they, they're just great. I put quite a few people on these, but I will tell you, full disclaimer, they're not for everybody. Not everybody can get down with the prim hooks, and that's okay, you know? Um, there is a hook for everybody out there, you know, whether it's prim or something else. There's always something for somebody. But as of late, you know, they've been having some really great deals on this. Am I using, am I on the right side? Hmm. I was supposed to flip it, I think. Yes, I was supposed to flip it. Glad I caught that. Anyway, about the prim hooks. So, yes, I've been seeing some great deals. So Joanne's has, well, I don't know if they still have it, but they had a pack of these large hooks I'm hanging on a peg for $34.99, which is about par for the course. But if you use the 50% off coupon they give you all the time, um, like 16 bucks, 16, 17 bucks, you can't beat that. Not for all these hooks, especially when Michaels sells a lot of these hooks, like almost 10 bucks a pop, and you get six of them in the box.
box. It's a great deal, in my very humble opinion. Just saying. Um, so if prime hooks are your thing, definitely check them out. Um, you can go online if you don't have a Joanne's near you. You can check out and see if they, you know, have them online. The last time I checked, they did. But then again, what do I know? <laughs> what do I know? Um, so yeah, this is looking nice so far, I think. We're only two rows in, but we'll see. It's one of those things, friends, where you have to just like work it out. You know, go out with it a little bit and then stand back and look at it. We shall see. Now, I could have just did a standard granny square, but what's the fun in that, you know? Let's just do the things and see how it turns out. Who knows, this could make a really good Boggy Creek blanket, you know? <clears throat> so we shall see. And this whole turning thing will definitely keep it from leaning. So I tested it out. I'm like, there's no way, you know? So I tested it out. I kept everything on one side and it sure did lean. It was like the leaning tower of Pisa in a blanket. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, well, we definitely need to make sure that we do not do this going forward. So, yeah. The only hang up I have about working with blanket yarn is the skein. Like, it's very tight in the middle. And so when you work the skein and you're like trying to get the yarn out, it's very tough. You know, it doesn't flow out as smoothly as like your typical three and four weight yarns. Um, so there's that. That's my only hang up with this yarn. It's just a lot to deal with. But once you get through it and there's space inside the middle there, it flows fine. It's just the beginning. But that's a very small problem to have. So I'm grateful. That it's not something more severe. Okay, let's go ahead and trim this. Let's flip it over. Okay, okay, I can see, I can see the situation. Yes. I can, I can see what it's trying to become, right? So I'm just going to keep going. We have to see the bigger picture, friends. <laughs> the bigger picture. So, anyway. I have these other whips down here. I thought about doing them for this session. But then I said, you know what, friends? Let me do something different, you know? I don't want to lose my Crojo. And the only way that I keep myself from losing it is to just be adventurous. Try something new. Be different. You know, start a new whip. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's for the house. <laughs> I love saying that, by the way. I really do. It's for the house. It's fine. I used to worry so much about my work, you know? The stitch definition, the counts, the tension, you know, all the things. I'm like, Juan, you stress out too much over the smallest things. It's for the house, don't worry about it. So that actually started from me to myself. I used to have to tell myself that. I was so stressed out about how imperfect some of my things were. I'm like, Juan, relax, it's for the house. No big deal. Just have fun with it, carpe diem. So, yeah, that's my mentality, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So... I actually do um, weekend Zooms with my official yarn addicts. Those are the members of my channel that have the higher tier membership. So, you know, we sit here every Saturday and every Sunday and, um, you know, we enjoy each other's company. But the one thing that they do that I do not do is crochet. Um, because, you know, I'm the host and the one thing I see them all doing is, you know, they're crocheting and I think to myself, like, I want to crochet too. So recently I said, you know what, let me appoint a co-host. And so I did, and it was all the things. It just, it was a game changer. So I appointed somebody, a co-host, 
and I was able to pick up my hook and my yarn, and it was all the things, but I watched, you know, from here, I'm watching, and I'm like, now my co-host can't crochet. <laughs> so I'm like, ugh, I feel bad, I don't want the co-host to not be able to crochet either, so, you know, what gives? Like, what do we do? So... I'm sitting here trying to ponder life's choices and be like, okay, well, Juan, if you're the host, you just have to be the host. Just be the host, Juan. You know, do the things. You know, use that time to not crochet and maybe work on some things that are on the desk that need to be addressed and taken care of. So, I don't know. I'm still trying to decide because I like to crochet with people. Like, yes, I can crochet with mom. That's fine. You know, that's great, actually. But I want to be able to sit down, relax like this, and look at other crocheters on the Zoom, you know? So, um, special thanks to the co-host. Um, I didn't get permission to say her name, so I won't say her name. But, yeah, the co-host really allowed me the opportunity to crochet, and I felt really good about it. So, yeah. Anywho, this is turning out nice. I really am liking this whole way of doing things with this. So I'm doing three singles in the corners, you know. So it's turning out nice. I like it. Anyway, I'm going to continue. <laughs> I don't want to destroy what it is that I'm working on by forgetting my placement of where the stitches belong. So sometimes I have squirrel moments while I'm crocheting and I forget that I was supposed to put it in a particular place. And yeah, let's not do that. Two and three, chain two. Yes, so I really enjoy seeing other people's work as well. So like when I'm not crocheting and I'm on the Zoom calls and they're like crocheting, I'll be like, can you raise your work up and show me what you're working on? I'm curious. It looks so good. And they would show me, and it's so great, you know? Because a lot of people, myself included, get inspiration from seeing other people's work, you know? Like, all these people were doing, like, um, these square blankets, you know? Not the same square blankets, but, like, square. And I'm like, okay, well... Maybe I need to look on Ravelry for a square blanket. You know, as of late, everybody's working on my spring cow as well as Sophie's Universe. So, you know, they're just doing it on their own and they're showing me all the things. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool. I love that. You know, all the different colors, all the different weights. It's so good. Now, originally, Sophie's was supposed to be like a crochet along, provided that I got the permission from the author to do so. And, you know, unfortunately, I did not get the okay to do that because there are video tutorials out there for um, Sophie's Universe. So we were pointed in the direction of going to the video tutorials and utilizing them as a resource instead of having like a, you know, a crochet along and having me host it, which is fine. You know, you got to make sure you're doing things the right way anyway. So I was perfectly okay with it. But it didn't stop people from working on it anyway. So they went ahead and started working on it, myself included. And so that was nice. Um, to see all the different colors and things. Now mine, I'm, wor I'm working with one yarn. It's literally um, Caron Jumbo Ombre. And the colorway is Sunset. So, yeah. I'm letting the yarn do all the talking. Like, I'm not changing colors. I'm not stressing myself out about making sure everything is perfect in that regard. I am literally just grabbing the yarn and doing my stitches and enjoying the process of making Sophie's Universe. It's literally just that, which is amazing. 
And for me, I mean, I'm not struggling with it at all, actually. I'm actually enjoying the process. Um, my only hang-up, and friends, there's always a hang-up, right? So <laughs> I did not get my book spiral-bound. So I'm finding myself having to, like, prop the book in such a way that it doesn't close in on itself. Now, a lot of people I've seen on the YouTube streets went ahead and got their books spiral-bound, and I think it's phenomenal. I think it's great. But me, I just don't have the time to do that. Oops. I was about to do another round of double crochets. Let me fix that very quickly. Okay. Anyway, I don't have time to get to, like, an Office Max or a Staples to get that done, which is fine. You know, it is what it is. I'm not going to cry over spilt milk, so as they say. But it's working for me, you know? I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm using a post-it note to kind of like outline where I last was on a particular page. And so if the book closes, I just look for the post-it note. And I know there's a lot of tips and tricks out there to get what I need without having to get the book spiral bound. Um, yeah, I just... <laughs> it decided to not have the energy to research it. I'm like, it is what it is, you know? It's fine. I'm not stressing out about it. Um, let's get right into this one here. But yeah, I'm noticing as this grows, it's actually making sense. So I'm thankful that I'm sticking it out. Because at first, friends, I was a little worried. I'm like, hmm, I don't know if this is going to look correct. <laughs> but we'll see. I will tell you that doing these rounds of single crochets, it does slow me down a little bit because typically I'm very, very fast at doing the grainy square, but it's giving me a chance to just enjoy, like slow down one, enjoy the stitches, you know, just have fun with it. I think that needs to be redone because I wasn't happy with the way that looked. Anyway. As of right now, I am in the middle of week three, recording week three of the Spring Crochet Along as of the date of this video. Um, it is Wednesday. It rolls out on Saturday. So I'm trying to do things in a more timely manner. Like the last two weeks of rolling out the cow, I've had to rip my project out and redo it because of the video editing. Like it would not upload. And when it did, the file size was so huge that it took YouTube forever to upload it. Like last week is a classic example of what I'm talking about. So I uploaded the video Friday evening after dinner I went ahead and uploaded the file to YouTube and it said originally that I had um, four hours you know because each video so I have a left-handed tutorial and a right-handed tutorial and so each video was an hour and 20 minutes so combined I had you know th that much time to wait and I'm like okay fine whatever so <laughs> four hours pass and it's not moving so I said okay fine the YouTube streets are busy people are uploading it's fine it is what it is let me go to sleep I'll wake up it'll be uploaded I'll go ahead and turn them on you know they're gonna be late obviously um, because I wanted it to be uploaded and on the YouTube streets at the stroke of midnight come Saturday morning you know but I said to myself, it's okay, because technically it's still Saturday, it's not late, you know, it's fine. So I wake up Saturday, it did not move. It said it had a four hour wait. So I said, all right, we're still on Saturday, I'm not gonna stress out, I'm gonna go to work. So I go to work. So I'm at work and the needle is not moving. And I say to myself, okay, let me get through the shift. If the needle doesn't move, then I'll reassess and figure things out. So I finish work. 
still four hours. I'm like, this is not, something's not right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the file. So I went ahead and I deleted it. And because of me deleting it, I had to re-record week two. So I frogged my blanket back back to week one and I re-crocheted and re-recorded week two on Saturday like on the day that it was due in the evening I had waited all day for it to upload it just would not go so my only choice was to start fresh and that's what I did friends I started fresh and I got it I got it it uploaded at like midnight <laughs> yep it uploaded at like midnight and so then I had to go in and do final touches and all the things and yeah so it was a whole thing friends I was like this cannot happen every week so once it rolled out I said all right let me give a, myself a day to breathe and then I'll get back to recording so you know I started recording week three Monday morning, did the intro, I'm already crocheting, I have the stitches, so we're good. I just cannot continue to have these snafus with YouTube or with the camera and uploading and all the things because I can't really pinpoint what exactly is the problem because it uploaded from my camera to the YouTube streets and it just sat there. It would not move. And I'm like... I have to get this uploaded. People are waiting to start this. Like, I don't understand, you know? And then I said to myself, I could do this super early and have it already there days in advance before it all starts. But when was I going to have the time? You know, my day job has me away 60 hours a week. And, you know, between all the other things that I'm doing, like... I'm a caregiver to my mother. So it wasn't like I had the time to just sit here and crochet all day to have this ready. So my time was very limited to begin with. And I think all things considered, we're making it work. <laughs> we are making it work. And so that being said, all things considered, I have to give myself kudos. You know, you know I give myself grace, but I also give myself kudos for doing what needed to be done in the moment that it needed to be done, you know? Um, yeah. So it got posted. People are watching it. They're enjoying it. It's correct. You know, I just, I'm taking my time. I'm making sure that all the stitches are falling correctly where they need to go for those who are stitch counting. And I know there are quite a few people out there who love to stitch count, you know, there's something about knowing that there's the correct number of stitches on each particular row that makes them feel like they are accomplishing something and it's complete. So I respect that, you know, not everyone feels that way and that's fine too, but I have a respect for everyone and how they feel about their project. So with that being said, I am taking the time to really count all of my stitches. I'm recording it in the show notes. I'm being super thorough because I want to make sure that, you know, down the line, when it's not spring anymore, if someone comes across my crochet along, they'll be able to follow it and not have to reach out to me months later and ask me questions about row seven or round 13 or, you know, whatever the case may be. So, yes, I feel like if I'm putting in the extra work now to make sure that it's thorough now, we're good. It's like planting a seed, watching the tree grow. So, yeah. I'm super proud of that. I'm happy that it's been well received. People are really enjoying it. It's not overly complicated. The stitches are, are fun, you know. There are challenging projects out there on the YouTube streets, and sometimes people do love a challenge, but this cal is literally a palette cleanser. So like you could be working on Sophie's or something very intricate where you're counting all the time, like Apache tears or something. 
But then you can just come to this and just be like, all right, double crochet. Just do the double crochets where they need to go. If you want to check your work, this row has this, this amount of stitches. Go ahead and count, you know, if that's what you need to do for yourself. You know, so putting the numbers there just puts everyone's mind at ease, I feel. So I'm okay with it. I don't mind. Anyway, I think this this crochet law is going to look amazing when it's done because the stitches that we're getting, um, I mean, they're basic stitches, right? But the fun part about this is if the stitches don't fall into place, I can veto one of those stitches and be like, sorry guys, we're not doing the single crochet. We're moving on to something else. And that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened during week two. We got single crochet and I said, nah, we're not doing that. We're trying to grow the blanket out. We don't want something heavy, you know. We want something light, a throw. When you think throw, you think, you know, airy, something that's not going to bog you down. It's not like a winter blanket for Siberia somewhere, you know. It's a throw for springtime. So we were taking single crochets out. And don't get me wrong, I love a good single crochet like the next person, but there's a time and a place for certain stitches. And when you're trying to grow a blanket out and you have single crochets in the round, you need a lot of rounds. You know, the only thing that I would find acceptable, yeah, would be the moss stitch because you are doing a single crochet, chain one, skip one. So you're not doing a single crochet in every single stitch, you're skipping. So it's half the weight, which is fine by me. And plus, you don't really need that many rounds of the moss stitch to accomplish the look, you know? Like a good four rows would do it, you know? There it is, the moss stitch, it was a stitch, it's there, you know? So that's kind of my thought process behind it. I think having um, single crochets is great when it's done tastefully, so. If we do get it in the near future, um, I will be including it just for a few rounds, just so that it's present visible so some of the other stitches that I want to put on there but I'm like I don't know if that's gonna work like I wanted to do um, the iris stitch the stitch multiple is five you know from end to end so two doubles a chain and two doubles so that's like five stitches so it would have to fall on a round that has an even number or something to that effect, I think. I'm sure I can make it work, it's fine. But the other challenge is, is that it is a rectangle. So all four sides are not the same. So when you have a stitch count that's, I don't know, let's say it's an odd number, but all your sides are even. And then to top that off, the one side has more stitches than the other side. So you have to do the math and figure out the difference between the sides. So for me, it's challenging, but I love a good challenge. So that's why I think I'm really enjoying it. Because I sit with my graph paper and I do all the math and I map everything out. It's so nice for me. So that's the fun for me. Yeah, I thought about doing popcorns and I said, nope, it's going to bog the blanket down. You know, who wants a spring blanket with a whole bunch of popcorns on it? I mean, some people would. I'm sure there are people out there that would really enjoy that, but I don't think I'm one of those folks, you know? I don't know. I have to give that some thought. <laughs> uh, a blanket full of popcorns. Now, my aunt and my grandmother, oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? They would make popcorns until the cows came home. They just, because... My aunt especially, she knew how to do popcorns without having to remove the hook. She could do it like continuously. And there are ways, and I have seen tutorials. One of my friends did a little snippet. Maybe it was Jen, I think it was Jen. She did a little snippet of a video where she did it in the round continuously. 
maybe it was in a row, but she did it continuously. Um, and it was very similar to the way that my aunt did it, which I think it was phenomenal. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, my personal opinion on it is it's a winter stitch. Or if it is something you're making for the spring, then let's have some chains around that popcorn. You know, let's air it out a little bit. <laughs> Put some windows around it. <laughs> uh, let the neighbors have some air. So, yeah. It's turning out so nice. I love how this is looking. Right? I think so. I think it's nice. It'll make a nice Boggy Creek blanket. Now, Boggy Creek, I think their measurements are supposed to be like 40, 40 by 50 or something like that. I think if I make this blanket like um, 40 by 40, like if it's square, 40 by 40, I think. I have to look. I keep forgetting. Like I look at those measurements all the time and I think I even wrote it down somewhere. <laughs> I even written it down. I just, for some reason I can't seem to remember with all the things that I'm trying to remember, you know, just something else in the memory bank. Look at all those ends. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of ends, friends. It's a lot of ends. That's okay for me. I don't care. It's all the things, all the ends. I don't really work with this blanket yarn that much. I think I mentioned that already. But, you know, when I'm in the stores and I'm shopping for yarn, I always eyeball their blanket yarn. I'm always looking at it. I'm like, I wonder if I could try this with that to do this and all the things. I don't know. Let me trim. Let me do some trimming here because I have been crocheting over some of the things here. The things. No. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and trim this one. There we go. Less ends, but still we have ends. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, I need orange. What am I doing? <laughs> uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this Whipping It With Wand session. I just babble on about random things, you know, just whatever comes to my mind, you know. I do try to keep it all crochet content related, you know. Sometimes I go off on a tangent and I talk about all the other things, but you know, there's always something going on crochet related because it, it never leaves my brain. Like every day, when it, it's the first thing I think about when I wake up, it's the last thing I think about before I fall asleep. I don't know why I'm super obsessed with all the things yarn and crochet related, you know. I don't know why that is. But all I can tell you is, is that I am doing exactly what I should be doing. Like, I was always told that if you're passionate about something to the point where it's the first thing you think of when you wake up, and it's the last thing that you think about before you go to sleep, then you're doing what you should be doing. And I feel that. I really do. And so, yeah. I just don't know why it took me so long, friends, to get in front of the camera every now and then I do get upset about that because I mean I took the classes in college you know public speaking and things but for some reason when I and I mentioned this before something about turning on a camera and not seeing the audience physically seeing them just really sparked some fear into me that I've never seen before but I fought through it and it took a while for me to regain some sort of confidence um, to be able to just feel comfortable and relax like this. Um, every now and then I still get a little a little nervous. I've been trained to, you know, perform, speak publicly in front of a lot of people. So I'm used to having the eyes on me, you know. But when you're in a room and there's no other person here and yet 
there's going to be a lot of people watching, yeah, the nerves kick in. But I've since recovered, and once I have recovered, <laughs> I then said to myself, why, why did you wait so long to turn the camera on? Why did you wait so long to, you know, come out of hiding, so to speak, you know? Because I kept my yarn and everything in my bedroom, and, you know, all along my closet, like the top shelf, I'd have all my yarn up there, nothing like this. It was literally a shelf in the closet, from the shelf to the ceiling, all yarn, you know, that was my stash. And, you know, I always kept my closet door closed. No one really saw what I had, and my aunt's... Oh, I'm sorry, my aunt knew, and my grandmother knew, but, you know, I didn't really publicize the fact that I crocheted. And so, you know, there's a little bit of that thought in my mind, like, what what would it be like had I turned the camera on back when I started my YouTube account in 2014? You know, what would it, what would I be like now? You know, um... I started my YouTube account in 2014 just as a viewer, but what if I shared crochet back then? What would it mean for me now? What would I, I mean, I have no idea. Would I even be still doing this, you know? But I think everything happens for a reason. I think that I turned the camera on when I was meant to, and my channel turned out it's turning out the way that it's turning out because it's supposed to you know all the things good the bad the in between all of it i think it's just supposed to happen the way it's supposed to happen that's all you know so no regrets here i just wonder sometimes you know i guess we all do about all different kinds of things like you know i wonder if i ever if i took the job that i was offered you know where would i be now so it's not just this it you can literally think about it in all things. But now that I'm older, because um, that was 10 years ago, right? So 10 years ago, I was 35 years old. And yeah, it was a very different time for me back then. So I don't know where I'd be right now. You know, so it's definitely interesting to say the least. We're getting there, friends. Let's see. I've done several rows. Wow. Let's go ahead and chain that off. Where are we at? 48 minutes. Okay, I'm going to put another round on here. Because why not? <laughs> because why not? Let's flip it over. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me right now? Look at how beautiful that looks. Right? <laughs> uh, I'm a little dramatic about the situation because it's literally just a modern granny square blanket. But it's fine. I love it. It's for the house. <laughs> it's for the house. I love it. Okay. So let's put the tails all on one side. I don't like having the tails on both sides. It's too much for my eyes. <laughs> Okay, put it back there. All right, so no tails on this side. I love it. There's no leaning. It lays nice. It feels amazing. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep going with this. All right, so what color are we on? We need to do the blue. We need to do the blue, friends. Anyway. Oh, my coffee's getting cold. Hold on, I need a sip. The llamas and the alpacas and all the things are watching my coffee for me. <laughs> Isn't this gorgeous? These two are the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. This one was handmade. This one was uh, purchased. And the hat is literally all the things. Oh my goodness. It is so good. And then my squirrels. One was bought and the other one was made. So 
they were meant to be here. So one was bought, one was made. One was bought, one was made. It's so good. I love that for me. So until I get the shelves situated, they're going to sit right here for a while. Now, I may keep my llamas and my alpacas and things, these two. I'm going to keep them here in camera view because they really help balance my world out. I have the no drama llama. <laughs> oh, I love I love both of those. It's so good. I came in the studio this morning and I just looked at these and it just put an immediate smile on my face like you would not believe. It's so good. <sighs> My goodness. I do have to say, I have some of the best, best supporters. Like, those who support me really support me. There is no middle of the road. It's either you, you love me or you hate me. <laughs> it's one of those two, you know? And fortunately for me, there's more of the former than the latter, you know? the love or the hate. So I'm very fortunate in that regard and I hope it stays that way. You know, I want all the folks to love me because I love all the folks, you know. It takes more energy to be negative than it does to be positive, you know. So I prefer to stay positive because it's less stress and it's less energy and it's less all the things. So I thoroughly enjoy watching other people be positive as well you know it's a lot of fun um just being uplifting and joyous and light-hearted and you know with everything that's going on in the world right now the one thing that we just need to really concentrate on is ourselves and just be happy you know even when you think there's nothing to be happy about or to smile about there's always something. And if you're not sure, just tune into my channel. <laughs> You'll find something to smile about, you know. It's always there. I make sure of it, you know. So, always come to my channel when you're feeling down. Because, you know, this is not a place that I would want to be negative at all. So... We try to stay positive here. And then my Facebook group, as I mentioned, you know, if you want to be around more positive, like-minded folks, come to my Facebook group. Um, all the posts are monitored before they're put out there, so you won't come across anything negative. I have a group of people that sit there and they, they monitor the comments. They won't allow anything to go through that's negative in nature. So, yeah want to make sure that everybody's experience is a positive one because we need more positivity in our lives you know everybody so yeah <laughs> I'm laughing because I cannot believe that I'm sitting here on a whipping it with wand session with Burnett blanket <laughs> I never thought that the day would come and it's here and I'm doing the things with Burnett blanket in these colors at that which I think is amazing if this turns out to be a boggy creek blanket I think whoever gets this would be like oh my goodness this looks amazing this looks like Legos <laughs> it looks like a bunch of Legos I love that for them speaking of which I wanted to create a Lego blanket I just have to figure out the logistics behind that, like a Boggy Creek Lego blanket, um, and just put together, like, maybe get a, gra a piece of graph paper and just lay out the different shapes and the colors and things and just make it work. I think it's possible. I think it's doable. Yes, I'm going to give it a whirl. I'm going to see if I can make that work. Um, and I'm going to try and not do it. I'm going to try to not do it in single crochets. I can't talk. It's been a day, friends. <laughs> Every day has been a day, you know? I come home to my happy place, which is the studio. And I sit here and I babble on about all the things. 
even during like the podcast episodes, I find myself just babbling. Like I share what's in my mind <laughs> in the moments. It's so relaxed for so many reasons. Um, and they're all good reasons. So, yeah. And the other thing too is, is that, um, as I babble on, I, <laughs> I come up with ideas as I talk. I don't know why that happens, but like, I could be telling you a story about the alpaca and all of a sudden, wait a minute, there's this yarn that I want to use on this poncho that I thought about doing a while back, but I'm going to, you know, so things like that, you know, and what I'm referring to specifically is the Wancho Poncho. Originally, I wanted to do like a Serapi type situation, but then I'm like, no, let me shelve this because the kind of Wancho Poncho I want to put out is something that one would wear in like the fall, not necessarily spring or summer. But then I saw the alpaca and I'm like, wait a minute, there is this yarn that I saw on this website <laughs> that I want to get some of and but wait a second I might be able to make something for like the spring because it's a DK weight yarn it's not heavy it's not going to bog you down you know so as I was talking about it I was thinking all the things you know so this is turning out so nice wow I love this for me. <laughs> Bernat Blanket. Modern Granny Square. Who knew? I'm sure this is not like groundbreaking <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. I know there's probably millions of blankets out there like this. But for me, it's my first one. And so I am loving what I'm seeing for myself with all the things let me <laughs> come on hook <laughs> we're getting it friends I'm almost done this round here and then we will wrap up this whipping it with one session um, but listen friends it has been a pleasure sitting here with you guys while I babble on about the things hopefully you were able to work on a whip um, Maybe have some company, some background noise, in which case any of that is absolutely fine. Um, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. I would love that so much. Um, and if you're not subscribed to my channel and you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. And if you're not sure, go see some of my other videos. I have tutorials out there. I have podcast episodes. I'm the jack of all trades, but the master of none yet <laughs> someday you know um, lots of laughter lots of good times so if that's your thing consider subscribing I'd love to have you I go live every Sunday at 6 p.m. I bring my mother on the channel everyone loves my mother she's a deaf mute so I do sign language when I talk to her um, as of late I mean we have literally been in multiple areas of my house whether it's the squirrel's nest next door it's a whole room filled with like yarn and things it's where I go to sit down and relax and crochet um, she has been in the studio for the first time and I think it was Mother's Day she was in the studio for the first time we did a live zoom with the members of my channel and then of course we do our Sunday uh, lives in the uh, makes room but as of late we're getting adventurous because mother is mobile friends she was wheelchair bound for such a long time and now she's up and walking and she's got the walker and she's 80 years old it's so good I'm so proud of her so anyway um, yes I said all the things so if any of that interests you please stick around love to have you and if it's not your thing, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry that it's not your thing. But, I mean, if you've made it into, well, we're almost at an hour, right? Yeah, at an hour. So if you made it an hour, it might be your thing and you just don't realize it. <laughs> anyway, my friends, this is what we made for our Whipping It With Wand session. Super nice. I love that. It's not as, like, defined as, like, a four-weight yarn, but... 
I love it. It looks cozy and comfy. I love it. Okay. Anyway, that's it for this uh, session, my friends. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I said all the things, but just to reinforce the fact, if you enjoyed this, hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd love to have you. And then last but not least, hit that notification bell to stay updated with everything regarding me and my channel. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And until the next one, take care, friends. Bye.